Hi everyone, it's Dr. LeBlanc with a video screen capture lecture on translation protein synthesis. Our learning goals are to understand the mechanism of protein translation in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, to understand how antibiotics interfere at specific ribosomal sites and with specific steps of translation in prokaryotes, to understand the key specific events of each phase of translation, initiation, elongation, and termination, to understand what a polyribosome is and that in prokaryotes, transcription and translation from a gene occur simultaneously in the same cellular compartment, to understand how the features and subunits of the ribosome coordinate to achieve initiation, to understand how ribosomes position themselves on the messenger RNA during initiation and the role of complementary base sequences in the messenger RNA and ribosomal RNA in prokaryotes, to understand the roles of initiation and release factors, to understand how tRNAs bind and move through the ribosome during initiation, elongation, and termination to understand where the formation of peptide bonds between amino acids take place. This is a picture of a eukaryotic polyribosome. It's pseudo-colored. It doesn't actually look like this under the electron microscope, but you can see this line that threads through this entire diagram is the messenger RNA. On the messenger RNA are ribosomes, and each ribosome is producing a polypeptide. Here's a question for you. Where is the beginning of this messenger RNA? Where is the 5' end? Well, it would be where the polypeptides are the shortest, over here. There are many different antibiotics that exploit different uh, stages of protein translation in uh, bacteria. Some of them they're probably quite familiar with, erythromycin, tetracycline, streptomycin. For example, tetracycline blocks elongation by inhibiting the binding of amino acyl tRNAs to the ribosome. That's one of the first steps in elongation, binding of a tRNA with an amino acid. Erythromycin binds to the large ribosomal RNA and blocks elongation by interfering with the translation step. So you add an amino acid, but then you can't add any more amino acids. Streptomycin is a little insidious. It interferes with normal pairing between amino acyl and tRNA codons. It causes misreading in a lot of abnormal proteins, so it's kind of a slow death. Ribosomes are made up of a small subunit and a large subunit, and they assemble together to form the protein translation machinery, the, the machine that synthesizes proteins inside the cell. In bacteria and eukaryotic, there are differences between these subunits and the assembled ribosome. For example, the small subunit contains a 16S ribosomal RNA in bacteria, and in eukaryotes, it's 18S. The number of proteins is also increased in eukaryotes. In the large ribosome subunit, we actually have an extra ribosomal RNA. And again, the number of proteins is increased in eukaryotes, as is the size of the largest ribosomal subunit, 23S in bacteria and 28S in ribosomal RNA. Remember that the assembled proteins have a different sedimentation coefficient than, uh, that's different than the sum of these two because remember sedimentation is a measure of how quickly a molecule will migrate through a gradient based on its shape, its mass, and its size. There are three functional sites in a ribosome, the amino acyl site, the peptidyl site, and the exit site, or the E site. These three sites are three different binding sites for tRNAs at different stages of protein synthesis. They are actually comprised of spaces in the assembled ribosome uh, when the two subunits come together. So an A site has a part of it in the small ribosomal subunit and part is in the large ribosomal subunit. This diagram shows a messenger RNA 
with the triplet coat on depicted for you with a tRNA bound in the P site, the peptide site, and the polypeptide chain is stretching out from the top of the tRNA molecule, the three prime end. There are three stages of translation, initiation, elongation, and termination. Initiation begins when several different components come together. The small ribosomal subunit and the messenger RNA bind first, followed by it, the initiated tRNA, and then later on the large ribosomal subunit joins to create an initiation complex with a tRNA in the star codon in the P site of the ribosome. In prokaryotes, initiation commences when the shine delgarno sequence of the messenger RNA hydrogen bonds to a specific sequence of nucleotides in the 16S ribosomal RNA of the small subunit. These bases are complementary. The small ribosomal subunit has two factors bound to it, IF3 and IF1. When these factors are bound, it is ready to bind a messenger RNA. The messenger RNA binds to the 30S subunit on the surface. The Scheindel-Garno sequence is complementary and it hydrogen bonds. This positions the start codon in the P site of the ribosome. The next thing that happens is IF2, initiation factor 2, and GTP promotes the binding of the initiator tRNA to the start codon at the P site. The initiator tRNA is a special tRNA that contains F, form, which stands for formal methionine. This is a methionine amino acid that is modified by the attachment of a formal group. So we have the tRNA, FMET, GTP, IF2, IF3, IF1, and the small ribosomal subunit bound with the messenger RNA. When this happens, IF1 and IF3 are released, IF2 hydrolyzes this GTP and the large subunit binds and you finally have an assembled ribosome. This is the 70S initiation complex. Remember, this is prokaryotic translation. This marks the end of the initiation states. I just want to point out that this modified methionine in the initiator tRNA occurs only in prokaryotes, not in eukaryotes. This is the only charged tRNA that enters through the P site. During the elongation phase, all the rest of the tRNAs with amino acids are going to enter in at the A site. There is a long list of initiation factors and elongation factors and termination factors. Um, all of the bacterial factors are, are start with either the letter I or the letter E or R. When we talk about eukaryotic factors, we add a little E at the beginning to indicate that these are eukaryotic. We discover the bacterial ones first and later on their components in eukaryotes. So these are the elongation factors, and then we have release factors as well. Eukaryotic translation initiation is a little bit more complicated than prokaryotic translation. We start out by making two separate complexes, one with the messenger RNA and one with the small ribosomal subunit. The first thing to happen is that an initiation factor complex binds to the 5 prime 7 methylguanosine cap of the messenger RNA. Here's the 7 methylguanosine cap right here, and you notice that we have EIF4, G, 4E, and 4A bound to this position on the messenger RNA. Notice that this messenger RNA is curved around. EIF4G actually binds to poly A binding protein, which is attached to the poly A tail. This ensures that messenger RNAs that may have been damaged by removal of their poly A tail or possibly more of the sequence of coding region of the messenger RNA are not translated. 
Only intact messenger RNAs will be loaded onto ribosomes. The 40S small ribosomal subunit binds a complex of tRNA, MET, notice this is not formal methionine, doesn't have a formal group attached to it, just plain old methionine, and EIF2 plus GTP, so that's similar to the prokaryotes. This binds to the small ribosomal subunit, also with EIF3 and 1A, and then these two complexes get together here, down here. The two complexes bind to form the 48S pre-initiation complex. So this is a pretty big complex, lots of accessory proteins. And this is, remember, only the small ribosomal subunit down here. The next thing that happened is scanning. Scanning the messenger RNA to find the star codon occurs, and it's usually the first AUG after the 5' prime cap. But Marilyn Kozak looked through many, many sequences of messenger RNAs and eukaryotes and came up with this consensus sequence that for an optimal star codon. This is important to notice, know if you are going to build a eukaryotic expression system. You would like your ribosomes to bind efficiently, so if you have the best consensus sequence in front of your star codon, you'll be uh, better able to make a lot more protein. Okay, so after we scanned and we found the correct star codon, this process call is, it requires some energy. The release fact, the, the uh, initiation factors are released. Okay, the tRNA remains bound to the AUG and the large ribosomal subunit joins. This forms the initiation complex and then the next phase is elongation. So the first tRNA that binds is bound in the P site of the ribosome. This is the P site. This would be the A site, and this would be the E site. It's in the P site. Translational elongation stage is a multi-step process. First of all, we have our messenger RNA bound to the complex with a, a codon in the P site and another codon in the A site. Here we have a tRNA bound in the P site with a short polypeptide consisting of three amino acids attached to the three prime end of the tRNA. The next step is that a new charged tRNA comes into the A site and a peptide bond is formed between the last amino acid to be added that was attached to the P site and the new amino acid of the of the tRNA in the A site. So the whole entire polypeptide moves over to the A site. Now we have a polypeptide chain that's four amino acids long. We started with one that's three amino acids long. What happens next? Well, this entire uh, messenger RNA with the tRNAs attached to it ratchets over one codon, three nucleotides. So that the codon, this blue codon that was in the A site, now is in the P site with its attached tRNA that's hydrogen bonded to the template and the attached polypeptide that is now four amino acids long. The tRNA that was in the P site moves over to the E site and then it can leave. And we are ready to add the next amino acid by having a charged tRNA bind in the A site and hydrogen bond to the template. I want to point out that the 23S ribosomal RNA, the component of the large ribosomal subunit, is the actual peptidyl transferase enzyme, the, en the catalytic site that creates the, the peptide bond between amino acids is actually comprised of nucleic acid. It is an RNA enzyme, not a protein enzyme. One other important feature of the small ribosomal RNA in, in the small ribosomal subunit is that it can detect a mismatch in the A site. If a tRNA binds and doesn't correctly bond to the codon of the messenger RNA, there's a conformational change that happens and a pause in the translation activity. It won't resume until this tRNA 
the incorrect one leaves and the correct tRNA binds. How do we stop this process efficiently and accurately? The termination stage occurs when the stop codon enters the A site. It is recognized by a release factor, not a tRNA, but a protein. When this binds, the polypeptide is released from the tRNA, and the tRNA, the last tRNA exits, and the whole complex disassembles. The small subunit and the large subunit come apart. The release factor is also released, and the message RNA is also released, and it can be used again. Remember that in bacteria, we have no separate compartments. There's no nucleus. And so the DNA, the RNA, and the protein are all together in the same cellular co compartment at the same time. Here we have a polyribosome here in a prokaryotic cell. Notice that we have our DNA molecule here, and attached to it are molecules of RNA polymerase. The RNA polymerase is synthesizing the RNA, and these other larger uh, complexes here are the ribosomes making protein. They also have proteins coming out of them, which end up being coiled right away. So if you were to look at this DNA, the stretch of DNA, where's the beginning and where's the end? Well, since the uh, ribosomes are attached to small messenger RNAs here and large messenger RNAs here, this is the direction of both transcription and then this is the direction of translation. Here's a summary slide, and I encourage you to look at this in uh, your textbook as well. Um, it, it outlines the composition of the ribosomes in bacteria and eukaryotes, which are the tRNAs. Notice that the tRNA initiates your tRNA in bacteria. It has the formal group and not in eukaryotes. Bacteria have Schindel-Garno sequence, but eukaryotes require the 7-methyl cap in order to get the small ribosomal subunit to bind. You select the start codon and AUG by the position of the Schindel-Garno sequence, and in eukaryotes, it's the COSAX rules. The elongation rate is faster in bacteria, a little slower in eukaryotes, and termination requires release factors, um, and in bacteria, it's coupled to transcription, which we just saw in the previous slide, but not in eukaryotes because we have nuclei in eukaryotes. So in summary, ribosomes are assembled from small and large subunits, each of which are a combination of ribosomal RNA and proteins. Eukaryotic and prokaryotic ribosomes have the same basic subunit structure, but eukaryotic ribosomes are larger. Antibiotics interfere with protein synthesis by blocking the sites of tRNA binding, peptide synthesis, and by binding initiation and elongation factors. Protein synthesis is a polymerization reaction and has discrete initiation, elongation, and termination phases. The assembled ribosome has three sites for tRNAs, the amino A, peptidyl P, and exit E site. During the initiation phase in prokaryotes, the 16S ribosomal RNA of the small ribosomal subunit binds to the Schindel-Garno sequence of the messenger RNA. This positions the start codon so that the initiator, tRNA, FMET, will be in the P site of the assembled ribosome. The steps of prokaryotic initiation are IF3 and IF1 bind to the small ribosomal subunit. Messenger RNA Schindel Gyno sequence binds to the 16S ribosomal RNA. IF2 tRNA FMET GTP complex binds. The IFs leave and the large ribosomal subunits bind. The steps of eukaryotic initiation are two complexes the pre initiation complex with a charged tRNA MET EIF2 GTP 
and EIF3, and the small ribosome is only bind to a capped messenger RNA with EIF4 complexes. The complex scans the messenger RNA unit until it finds the start codon. The factors leave and the large ribosomal subunit bind and attaches. Eukaryotes have the COSAC sequence that positions the ribosome at the start codon. In elongation, the steps are that a charged tRNA enters the A site, binds by complementary base pairing to the messenger RNA. The peptide bond is formed as the peptide is transferred from the tRNA in the P site to the new amino acid in the A site. The entire complex ratchets over, the tRNA in the P site exits, and the tRNA in the A site moves to the P site. Termination occurs when a stop codon is reached and release factors bind to the A site. The peptide is cleaved off the tRNA and both are rejected. The subunits separate and the messenger RNA is released and can be recycled. Polyribosomes occur in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. In eukaryotes, they are in the cytoplasm. In prokaryotes, they are attached to the DNA because transcription and translation occur in the same compartment.